Hi there, Doug Stewart with IT Creations. Today we have one of the new 15th generation PowerEdge servers, the Dell EMC PowerEdge R750. It offers hybrid storage and several new features. This system takes over from Dell's previous generation R740 server. It supports third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors with up to 40 physical cores in a standard 2U chassis. It may look a lot like the previous version, but a lot has changed on the inside to make this system stronger, faster, and better than it was before. Six Million Dollar Man keeps on popping up on my Netflix feed. Let's take a look. There are three things I'm loving about this platform. First of all, NVMe U.2 drives is an option up front. Second, a dual hot swap M.2 drive caddy accessible from the rear of the chassis. And third, the Dell Network daughter card or NDC has now been firmly replaced with an OCP card for flexible I.O. I mean, the I.O. with the NDC was flexible, but there are just more options now using OCP. I forgot to include that third generation Intel Xeon scalable processor should be at the top of the list. Oh, and then there's PCI 4.0 compatibility. And then again, maybe I shouldn't have limited it to three things. <laughs> well, I, there's actually four chassis options for this platform. 24 2.5 inch dry bay version, eight bay 2.5 inch chassis, 12 3.5 inch dry bay chassis, and our platform today with 16 all flash NVMe dry bays lining the front of the chassis. I should also mention that two other R750 platforms are also available, the R750XA and the R750XS. Maybe that makes six platforms. I don't know. The R750XA supports up to four full-width, full-length GPUs, the good ones, or up to six single-width cards like the NVIDIA T4 for distributed environments. The chassis is also a bit longer to support those GPUs. On the other hand, the R750XS offers the least performance of the new SKUs. Perhaps the XS is for extra small because it will only support CPUs with lower core counts, less memory modules, and offers fewer storage options. And just like that porridge Goldilocks lifted from those bears out for a morning power walk, the Dell R750 hits the mid-range between the two other options and maybe just right for your workload. I know you want one of these babies. I mean, who wouldn't? This is Dell's new 2U workhorse server that you can throw just about anything at it and be happy you did. Best of all, for a limited time, you can save up to $500 off our list price on pre-configured systems. It's easy. Click that link and when you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video. We can also custom configure this system to your specifications, just like Burger King, but a little more involved. For the control panel on the left side server area, you have two options, one with and one without QuickSync. Ours does not have QuickSync. The panel includes several status LEDs for system drives, temperature, electrical, memory, and PCI expansion slots. The big one serves a dual function as a system ID button and health status indicator that blinks and changes colors based on system health. The quick sync version is very similar with the same icons on the left plus two buttons where the system ID and status button is located on the other panel. One is for quick sync to temporarily pair your smartphone or tablet using Bluetooth. Just to be clear, quick sync 2 is not available on all the configurations, but is a nice feature for at chassis management of the system. It provides aggregate hardware and firmware inventory, plus system level diagnostic and system error information. And all of that is at your fingertips when using that smartphone in your pocket or a tablet outfitted with Dell's Open Manage mobile app, freely available from the App Store. On the right-hand server here, you have the customary control panel for a crash cart if you won't be using QuickSync 2. It includes a power on button, a USB port, an iDRAC direct micro port, and an iDRAC status LED. Management of the system is through the integrated Dell Remote Access Controller 9.0, also known as iDRAC. A dedicated RJ45 port on the back of the system provides a gigabit LOM access point and provides for remote management of the server using a standard browser. At chassis management also goes through iDRAC and is accessible from the front using a crash cart or the QuickSync 2 wireless module and the OpenManage application. Dell's OpenManage application also plays well with a number of other mainstream and open source apps for more granular control of the system, including Microsoft System Center, Red Hat Ansible modules, plus VMware vCenter and vRealize Operations Manager, to name a few. If you go with all NVMe drives on the 16-bay chassis, then there are sufficient ports on the system board to support all of them, including the optional rear drive cage on the system board. That means you get to use all of those PCI 4.0 expansion slots in back to support other things, like high-performance I.O. modules. However, if you go with the 24-bay version and want all NVMe, then the optional rear drive cages will only support SATA or SAS drives. It will also require a PCI-mounted card to support the eight additional front-mounted NVMe drives. 
Still not a bad trade-off in that the previous version R740 didn't even support NVMe. You had to go with the R740 XD for that. So a definite PCIe bandwidth improvement with Intel's third generation Xeon scalable processors. We also have a small front mounted H745 PowerEdge RAID controller or PERC. They actually refer to it as the F PERC in the documentation, presumably because it mounts in the front. An additional adapter PERC can be installed in the inserts risers one or two on the riser card. The H745 is kind of a transitional 10th generation card, but delivers the goods for SAS and SATA implementations. You can install two of these front mounted perks using dedicated connectors on the back plane. And that includes the H755N perk, an 11th generation RAID controller. It's PCI 4.0 compatible and specifically designed for supporting up to eight NVMe drives per controller with a full range of RAID options. Other 11th generation controller options are available, like the host bus adapter, 355i and e. The back of the system is where it gets interesting. One of the major differences is the placement of the PSUs which are now to either side of the chassis for better airflow within. You may have also noticed the smaller power supply unit. A power supply unit adapter is needed in this case to make it fit, but if you have a standard 86 millimeter PSU, then that PSU adapter is not required. Everything else looks pretty similar to the old one. However, one new feature is that little slot for a hot swap Boss S2. You know, a boot optimized storage subsystem to boot the system using M.2 drives. In this case, two of them. The controller board offers non-RAID and RAID 1, which mirrors the drives for redundancy. These M.2 drives can be removed directly from the back of the server without removing the cover panel, a definite improvement over the previous boss, which was embedded in the system. Aside from that, we don't have the optional storage cage with integrated fans that support either two 2.5 inch or four 2.5 inch drives, either SATA, SAS, or NVMe. The 4x rear drive cage will occupy risers 1 and 3, while the 2x drive cage will take up riser 3. Both have the M.2 cage incorporated into the bracket. I will mention NVMe in the rear cage is not an option with 24 NVMe U.2 drives up front. Then there are the standard PCI expansion slots. The OCP card is right in the middle of the chassis, and to either side of the OCP card are two other removable circuit boards, the LOM card and the I.O. board. The LOM card includes a dedicated gigabit ethernet management port to access the integrated Dell Remote Access Controller, or IDRAC. The LOM card can also be switched out to support a liquid cooling I.O. board. There's also an I.O. board that includes a few NIC ports. These removable ports provide the flexibility to upgrade the I.O. and management features quick and easy. The new Ice Lake CPUs deliver up to 40 physical cores and 80 virtual threads, plus more PCI lanes at 64 lanes, compared to only 48 lanes per CPU using earlier Gen 2 Intel Xeon scalable processors. I think I mentioned this, but PCI 4.0, and that means twice the bandwidth compared to PCI 3.0, not to mention 128 PCI lanes with both processors installed. This particular chassis came in a minimalist configuration with dual processors, a single 480GB SATA 3 SSD in front, and two 16GB 2400MHz memory modules, one for each CPU. The Intel Xeon Scalable Gold 6348 processors operate at a base frequency of 2.6GHz with a maximum boost of 3.5GHz. Each CPU has 28 physical cores and 56 virtual threads, plus significantly more cache at 42 megabytes compared to the top gold offerings from the second generation. These processors also support more memory, including data center persistent memory modules, DCPMMs, or for an even shorter acronym for Intel Optane Series 200 persistent memory modules, there's PMEM. Memory speeds of up to 3200 megahertz are also supported compared to only 2933 megahertz prior. At maximum capacity, the system will support up to 12 terabytes of memory using a combination of 8 terabytes of persistent memory, Optane, paired with 4 terabytes of load-reduced memory modules. With a CPU update, you have a multitude of expansion options. There are four risers possible in the system, with several options to choose from based on your potential workload and a few other dedicated PCIe connections coming directly off the motherboard. Our system does not have the riser 2, and there's a blank where riser 3 would pop in. Using a special GPU kit, you can install two full-height, full-length 300-watt GPUs, or four single-width 150-watt GPUs, or up to six 75-watt accelerators like the NVIDIA T4. The kit includes a different air shroud, a GPU air shroud filler, potentially a few cables, T-type heat sinks for CPUs 1 and 2, and high-performance fans from either the gold or silver tiers. If installing GPUs, then you will be using the 6 PCI 4.0 by 16 slot option instead of 8 PCI 4.0 by 8 configuration. This system will also support up to 6 PCI mounted SSDs for more and faster storage. 
As I already mentioned, there are the removable circuit boards at the back of the chassis with the OCP card, I.O. board, and the LOM card. Other items that have their own dedicated slot include the M.2 Caddy and an internal dual SD card module or IDSDM. The IDSDM provides dual SD cards for support of a hypervisor and a flash card on the other side for support of firmware updates and the like. Lastly, the H745 RAID controller has its own little perch on the back backplane. In fact, Dell calls this their rear mounting front perk module. It features 16 internal ports to support those 16 external front drive bays. This particular card is PCI 3.0 compatible and does not support NVMe drives, but does have flashback write cache or NV cache technology to protect data in the event of a power loss. For support of NVMe drives in a RAID, administrators can install the brand spanking new H755N controller. The Dell EMC PowerEdge R750 server features all sorts of new technology. They even updated the fans to be more efficient. Not to mention the chassis also supports optional liquid cooling for higher end systems with GPUs, maximized memory and storage. This is Dell's workhorse system that can be applied to a number of different workloads including database and analytics, high performance computing, virtual desktop infrastructure and many others. There is a lot packed into this system and I'm sure I missed or glossed over a few new features. So if you have any questions, just post them in the comments section below. If you made it this far, you are truly a masochist. Just hit that subscribe button because we've got more where this came from. Until next time, I'm Doug Stewart with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.